Pyromancy is the ultimate fantasy. We are born into dark and warmed by fire, but this fire we cannot touch. Those whose fascination with fire persists learn to hold it in their own hand. Pyromancy is the art of casting fire. Produce flame, then channel it, just as our ancestors did. A pyromancer must be in tune with nature herself. Hi! Welcome to another part of my Pyromancer playthrough. Enjoy! In the previous video I gathered everything I need to get started. So now I'm fighting against this giant red dog to test how strong my build already is. Well, and to level up a bit. Usually I primarily play melee. And I have to say that using Pyromancers is a lot more fun than I expected. The next boss required a lot of Firestorm casts. But luckily I picked up some Amber Herbs already. I always wanted to fight the rats this way. And as it turns out, it works much better than struggling against them with a melee weapon. This is the way Miyazaki intended. And I really have to try the same approach against the DS3 Deacons. If you've watched the previous video, you will have noticed that I have no actual plan what I'm doing. I'm just fighting whichever boss I feel like fighting and don't care about the intended path of progression. My current short term goal is to trade a red soul for a toxic mist. But I'm not even sure yet if I even want to cheese any bosses by using poison. But maybe I have to resort to it for the smelter demon. But who knows? We will see. By the way, I entered Lost Bastille via No Man's Wharf, which allows me to skip both the Pursuer and Rune Sentinels. I could go directly to the Lost Sinner right now if I wanted to. I just like how this game allows me to progress in so many different ways. Now I've got a fragrant branch that I will need to unpetrify straight, but first I will try to defeat this Pursuer here. Damn, I'm out of spells! And I don't know why. Oh yeah, there was something on the way here. But that's not an issue, as I brought a pair of fists. To be honest, that was a lucky kill. Beautiful. <laughs> this took like five tries. I'm also breaking a lot of my own rules here, as I intended on just rushing through the game without fighting any basic mobs, but I just can't stop myself from defeating the pursuer encounters. This specific pursuer holds a special place in my heart, as he caused my first restart when I tried to do a no death run. I'm just so stubborn that even during that challenge run I insisted on trying to defeat all optional bosses. By the way, did you know that he only spawns after you've picked up the antiquated key? Oh, that's my chance. That move is so punishable. Oof. So, now that he's done, I can finally progress. I really appreciate how many explosive barrels there are. This place is filled with them. I don't even remember where I picked up the lockstone. And I'm also too lazy to look through my recordings to find it out. <laughs> that whole fight was just my worst aim ever. Okay, this short term goal is done. Finito. Did you notice how my torch went out earlier? Now it's farming time! As I'm already down here in the gutter, I will use this opportunity to light up all the sconces. Hey Gutter Denison, I've got a surprise for you. That was rather abrupt. Some people might argue that Zeldora should be done as one of the last of the four primal bonfires, but defeating the spider will grant me access to another fire seed, so in this one it will be my first. I'm not sure if I should include the runbacks for this video, 
But I guess this one is okay, even though it's one of the longest. Because new players might learn that they don't have to fight any enemies if they just pull out their torch. This boss was unexpectedly hard for me, as I initially tried to use fireballs, but her fangs seemed to protect her from getting hit. So now I'm just running in circles around her to apply combustion directly to her face. I died more often to her than I usually do during my soul level 1 runs, which is made even worse by the fact that it takes me so long to defeat her, so combined with the runback I spent like half an hour on her. Yeah, wonderful. I'm sure that you know, they'll be of some use, some assistance. Now I'm back at fighting random bosses to level up some more. Here you can also see that enemies that are standing in water have higher fire resistance, as the first lord died from one fireball while he was still floating in air, but the others survived the hit as they received the soaked bonus. So this whole fight will be a bit of an upward battle, but that's not a problem for my trusty pyromancy flame. Whee! I bet Miyazaki was mad that this isn't a poison swamp. What? What? What spectacular pyromancy? Tell me about it. I, I, I have never seen anything like it. I still don't understand why this blockfish is so hated. I usually don't enjoy using cheese tactics. It often feels cheap and like cheating, but I'm just shooting the prisoners down to provide him his last meal. Yeah, eat him. Don't pay any attention to me. Okay. This is going to be fun. I never tried using those trap pyromances. Oh wow, they work pretty well. I often hear people complain about getting hit out of the fog wall for this run back, but all you have to do is just bait out an attack. Oh no! I don't like this. Fire Whip is just too powerful. Okay, next try, but this time I'm fighting fair. Well, as fair as I can fight while using ranged magic. At first, I also tried to do it without burning the windmill, but getting poisoned without the hut was just frustrating. You might be wondering what I'm doing back here in the Bastille, but I just was not ready yet to face the Iron Keep with a Pyromancer build. I'm shuddering just thinking about the high fire resistance every enemy here must have. Foot. Now I'm trying to collect the next fire seed, but that will require me to defeat the rune sentinels. I honestly don't even know what their fire resistance is, so let's hope for the best. Ooh, scary, the infamous Lost Bastille Clown Car. Never understood why it gets so much hate. It's not like it's hard to deal with these enemies and the game provides you with several obvious ways to do so. People really act as if fighting a small group of easy enemies once is the worst that could happen. I was too worried about this fight. Using fire is easy. Come on, jump up here! Imagine unironically complaining that it's somehow bad that you can strafe some of their attacks. I have my... Pyromancy of the Great Swamp, so I can usually manage with a bit of care. That was rather abrupt. 
Bioweed feels like cheesing, but it's fair in a 1 vs 3 fight. I think this is the first time that I fought all three of them solo. You can always tell if someone just rushed through the game when they tell you that the Scola edition moved every hate knight to hate's tower. Hades Tower of Flame lies beyond the far gate. Without the AI I cannot finally pronounce his name correctly. I feel bad for using pyromancers against the lost sinner. Who needs a close up bonfire if you can just do the zigzag? <laughs> Honestly, always pick the close up bonfire. That branch is worth the investment. You've reached the last boss of this video, so thanks for staying around. As you see, I did not clean up the bloodstain for this clip, but I really was not in the mood of running in and homeward boning out for this run back. I was also hoping that I would cut his arm off. This whole clip just isn't up to my standards. I was expecting him to do that hard to dodge AoE attack once he's at low health as a hint for me to warp back out of this training attempt, but he just died too fast. But that's what I get for playing without the hut. I just like the way it looks and how it forces me to mentally keep track of my spells. Yep, that's it for this part. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day!